All right, Izzy. Long time no see, buddy. Hey, man. How are you? Good. How good. are you? How are you doing? It's a, we need I'm to like good. we need to hang out where we're just hanging out because I feel like every time we are together, we are working. Working. I put that in scare quotes, but because like everything that we do is kind of fun anyway. But we're always yeah. kind of working. You consider on this work? I mean, yes, because and here's why: because I. I used to think that like work had to feel a certain way or be a certain it had to you know like you have to be like building a house like that's work. And oh, then, like blue collar work. Yeah, like, like blue collar hands. Like, but I like want making do your this. own jerky, yeah, chopping wood. Exactly. That's work. Yeah, killing a deer with your bare hands. But uh, but I like doing this, and I want this to be my job. So I call this work. This is my. Yeah, but job, we never. You know? Yeah, we never hang out in just a capacity where we don't talk about the podcast or like talk yeah. about you know things that we can do. It's not just like hey. Like, uh, what do you think about, you know, <laughs> apples? Yeah. Like, I don't even know. I don't yeah, even we, think that's a question. Yeah, man, we got to talk some apples, man. Maybe. maybe what yeah, if you and I have apples? What if we like get together and we and it's just like we find out that we just hate each other? Like the only time we yeah. like each the other only is when we're working on something. I mean, that could be the whole reason why we only talk about work because we're like, God, I can't stand this guy. <laughs> it's not work. <laughs> just deep down secretly, I have a burning hatred for you. And it's like, just keep it below the surface of our work and that's the magic actually it's the tension between us that exists that could you know honestly i think you're onto something we should never take shrooms together because we'll probably just kill each other from the the grand realizations that we absolutely cannot stand each other's guts that's deep man. Uh, that's deep that is super deep what a way to start the podcast yeah well welcome everybody (laughs) (laughs) welcome to the deep philosophical podcast known as the pop culture field manual podcast and we are happy you're with us folks i'm israel this is cameron we love you all and today we're talking about stunts folks what makes a great action movie all right is it the premise is it the weapons the gore the action sequences yes yes to all of these things but one of the biggest contributors to a truly great action film uh is an amazing stunt Right. It's something that uh, can stick in your memory. Right. If it's done well, if it's done in the right way. And I think more and more today with kind of the oversaturation of CGI, green screen, pulling off a good stunt and, and when you know it's real is even yeah. more impressive. And, and we're going to talk about kind of some great examples today. So today we're going to be talking about just stunts. And just so you know, when we talk about stunts today, we're not talking about necessarily fight scenes or fight choreography. That could be its own episode and it's impressive in its own right. But today we're talking about the good old fashioned, like guys jumping off of buildings or Tom Crows yeah. holding onto a pl- jet plane, you know, a C-130 or something. That yeah. kind of stunts. That's what we're talking about today. Yeah. Stunts for me make or break a movie. Yeah. You know, you you mentioned the CGI and like when you see CGI stuff, you're like, well, obviously it takes a lot of expertise and skill to create that, you know, using a software engine. But, you know, when you have an actual person in the driver's seat, so to speak, which mm-hmm. sometimes is actually the truth, uh, and they can execute some type of maneuver or stunt, Mm -hmm. That is just mind boggling and it's dangerous and there is such a uh, a high level of injury that can, you know, be that can be bestowed upon that person. That is what like makes or breaks it for me. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, in my experience in, you know, TV and film uh, so far, I've had such a deep respect for the stunt man. And it seems like every actor that's like getting out into the uh into the industry like whether they're starting out in background they always want to go to stunts because <laughs> the stunt guys get paid a good yeah, i mean the pay's nice but also it like is this almost like cult like network yeah. of people that just are constantly working uh, and that was really cool to see when I worked on Tenet because like the stunt guys, you know, obviously it's a very, very hard job yeah. and it's, it's extremely taxing on the body. Yeah. Like uh, I almost compare it to 
like professional wrestling for like the WWE. Like yeah. those dudes are stunt men. They are stunt men. Yes, they are. They it's are true. literally stunt men. And they, you know, obviously it's scripted and you know who's going to win in the fights or but or the matches, but you know, when you see a guy do a double backflip off a top rope and land on his stomach onto another person, Whenever I run into somebody on the street and like bump shoulders, you go out like, right. <laughs> yeah. But like these dudes smash through tables. They hit each other with chairs. Like it still hurts and it still leaves bruises. It breaks bones, but back to stunts, back to stunts. Let's get into it, man. We have, uh, yeah. there are so many to choose from, uh, and, uh, so many good ones as, as with, uh, as, as per usual, we will not be able to get to all of them, but I think it's only appropriate because uh, you know a recent uh, a movie in the franchise recently came out, uh, and Tom Cruise has been known to do his own stunts uh, at the much to the chagrin of many of the directors and filmmakers that he's worked with. But Mission Impossible, the Mission Impossible yeah. franchise, has become known for it's a, it has a very great it has a great style. It's kind of carved out a place in the cinematic universe for itself, uh, and it's one of the things it's known for is like what crazy stunt is tom cruise gonna do because he's been doing every every movie i feel like he has done some sort of crazy stunt or two and uh and he's only pushed the envelope uh as 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 the movies have gone on the most recent one uh, at the time of this recording mission impossible dead reckoning part one has just come out and uh you know even if you haven't seen it you know about that the cliff the jump. jump. Yeah, the, the, the cliff yeah, jump. Yeah. yeah. Where he's on the motorcycle and he rides it off and, you know, rides it off into uh, into the air and then he's got to pull his parachute and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I got big respect for Tom Cruise. I don't care what anybody says about that guy because you hear like the horror stories. And remember during, when COVID came out, there was that clip of him like, oh, yeah. yelling freaking at, out because somebody didn't have yeah, a mask freaking on. Freaking out because <laughs> he didn't have the masks on. So whatever, you know, diva, diva or not, the fact that this guy... And we're the same height, so don't think that short people can't <laughs> achieve great things. It's true. Uh, but uh, the fact that he does these extreme stunts, and it seems like his entire career now is just dedicated to him fulfilling his dreams, mm-hmm. his dream, quote-unquote, stunts, and doing them himself. Because I was listening to an interview with Matt Damon and they were all talking about Tom Cruise. Cause let's be honest, Tom Cruise is the last great action hero. Yeah. He's, like, the, he's he the last great, like one of the last old school movie, great star. movie stars. There you go. He's a movie, yeah, movie star, star. You know? movie star. Yeah. He's not just an actor. He is a stunt man. He mm-hmm. is a producer. He is a writer. He is a director. He like the movie is Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like that was listening to an interview from Matt Damon and they were talking about the mission impossible. And, uh, you know, every, it seems like everybody who's met Tom Cruise has a Tom Cruise story. That's just amazing. <laughs> he's uh, so because intense. Because he is Tom Cruise. Yeah, you he's know? such an intense and he's dude. Just an extremely intense dude and an extremely driven guy to make movies. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like that guy's entire life is movies and yeah. to make movies. Yep. So I'm listening to this interview with Matt Damon. He's like, when I met Tom Cruise, we were talking about Mission Impossible. And he's just like, okay, you know. For Mission Impossible, I want to do this stunt. I've been dreaming of doing this stunt where, you know, I'm running on top of a moving train. And my safety guy said I couldn't do it because it's unsafe. So the first thing I did was find a new safety guy. (laughs) (laughs) I love that story, man. Yeah. And their reaction to this, you know, Matt Damon talking about this was just like, well, you know, if the safety guy used like his job is to save something's unsafe. So if the safety guy like is saying something's unsafe, you find a new safety guy. What's the point of even having a safety guy? Right. Right. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But I respect that so much because he literally has these, you know, visions in his mind and he will literally break all the rules just to make them happen. Yeah. And he does them successfully. So, I mean, nothing bad happened yet. (laughs) <laughs> well, and that's the thing about Tom Cruise. You said it yourself, Cameron. Uh, he knows every aspect or seems to know uh, many aspects of filmmaking. Uh, he knows how to plan things out, how to get things done. He knows what everybody's job is and how to coordinate these kinds of things. So I think as safe as anything could be that he has done, I think they try their best to make it as safe as possible. Yeah. And then it's just the fact that it's, 
you know, a lot of times when you have stunt men, it's because the actor has to go and act. They have a, a role to play in the movie and they're not interchangeable. You know, you can't just switch yeah. it back and forth. So it's very dangerous to have an actor do their own stunts because if they get hurt, then you got to stop production. And actually they had to do that on uh, Mission Impossible. I think it was Fallout um, where he jumps across. Uh, uh, from building to building and he actually Tom Cruise actually broke his ankle and he had to be out for six weeks and that was like the yeah. bare minimum too because it's like even if he wasn't fully recovered he's like no we're, we're going back to filming but like so Tom Cruise is hurt and then production stops and everybody nobody works you know and stuff so that's yeah. one of the drawbacks of having him do his own stunts but on the other hand they do so much coordination they do so much uh, um, planning and stuff that it's like it's about just about as safe as it could be. Uh, yeah. So, you know, hats off to the him and the crew. Yeah. But back to Mission Impossible, I feel like every movie has a stunt in there that just tops the, like, the, if, like, when Mission Impossible 1 came out, great stunts. And then the second yeah. one, you're like, even better stunts. And then the next one, even better and <laughs> yep. better and better. It's, it's kind of like John Wick with the, uh, with the gung fu, like, yep. evolution. But, uh, yeah, you can't talk about amazing movies that incorporate stunts without talking about Mission Impossible. Do you have a favorite one out of all of them? If you had to pick, like, one or maybe oh, maybe dude. one in a runner-up or something, because there's so... I'm going to show my ass right now. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. i got to rewatch all of them before oh, really? I go and watch. Yeah, because they I've I've seen them, but it's been so long. It has I been. mean, obviously, there's, there's parts when they're, like, in uh, Dubai on the the tallest building yeah, what's that called again yeah the burj khalifa or something like that yeah, it's one of the tallest yeah, buildings right. in the world and they're scaling it and yeah. like sliding on it and everything that to me i'm you know that would be terrifying to Dude. just be at that level of height and yeah, still have to like remember your lines and you know completely yeah, and he's still not performing. lose character yeah still performing yeah that's the thing it's like when you're in that level of danger like uh i i compare it to I had to do some mountain climbing for a uh, production I'm working on. And, uh, like, you know, the people were like, talk, what are you doing? You know, tell me what you're feeling. <laughs> and, like, I was just silent because I had to scale this fucking cliff with full military pack on and, like, all my equipment and weapon. And it was snowing and my hands were freezing. And I'm just like, shut up. I'm trying to focus right now. I'm literally trying to focus. Leave me alone. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, to, to like have that experience myself, and then watch these movies where they're doing these intense stunts and are still able to like say lines or still able to perform at you know the level of like you know award winning movie acting yep. uh, is extremely commendable. Yeah. So hats off to you, Thomas. Thomas Maypother. Thomas Cruz Maypother. It's funny because in the second one, I was doing a little research. Uh, for an upcoming episode, but uh, mm. you know his his last name is actually I think Maypother, and he has a cousin or something that, who's also an actor. I think William Maypother, or maybe he's got a couple. But uh, the his cousin was actually a henchman in Mission Impossible Two, and so nice. he had both of the Maypothers, uh, Maypother uh, clan, I guess, in there. But if I had to choose one, that's uh, it's a tough man because I really like the fact that he just got himself strapped to the be the side of a military plane. Like it was like a C-130 or something like that. Yeah. And then he just took, you look at the behind the scenes, man, and they're just like, okay, ready to go. He's strapped there. They got the camera on him and they just take off and he can't, yeah. they can't stop until they land again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so that I just, I my hat, but the, the, the halo jump in fallout, uh, so it just seemed like super, just seemed super cool, you know? Yeah, they anything basically, with Halo, come on. Yeah, man. I, yeah, just jumping out of a plane. And not only that, but like you say, he has to perform, right? There's a scene and there's like lines that he has to say. And he's only got, you know, what, a minute, minute and a half. And if they don't get it, that's it. He, it. I think I, yeah. I was watching the behind the scenes. He's like, we get one jump a day because it has to be at a certain time period. Like has to be in the yeah. morning, I think, or something or at night. And yeah. he's like, if we don't get it, then we don't get it. We have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention, jumping in general can get kinked with anything. Yeah. If the cloud cover, if there's too many clouds, if there's too much wind, it's like there are so many factors already that are playing against you when planning any type of jump, even in the military. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So, like, if you don't get it, you need, you need to get it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think one thing, like you were talking about the C-130, I love how they used it in the marketing as well. He's just like, hey, I'm Tom. He's like literally on the side of a C-130, and he's like, hey, I'm Tom Cruise, and go see Mission Impossible. And then the the, pain, the plane like banks left, and like he's just still on the side of it. Oh, that was, yeah, that was for this latest one. He was on like a little biplane, and he was talking yeah. about like, hey, it was just like kind of come back to the movies kind of thing. He's like, we film these big stunts. And he's like standing, he's like strapped in, but he's standing on top of the, the driver's seat. Or you know, for the plane and talking out to the camera, and then like the director Chris Christopher McQuarrie comes up in another plane. He's like, "Hey Tom, we we, we got to get going, man. We're losing the light." He's like, "All right, everybody, I'll see you at the movies." And then yeah, that little plane banks off, and he's still yeah. looking. Can he's you imagine the feeling of like being on that plane, being strapped, and then that thing banks, just oh, like no. dude, your heart's no. in your throat, man. Yeah. Plus the amount of like when you are doing an airborne jump and you jump out of the plane. You know, the the amount of wind blast that yes. initially hits you yes. is like debilitating. <laughs> <laughs> so to just constantly being hit with that and then also have to like go and get G's, you know, like yeah. pull G's while getting blasted and like still smiling is, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Cruise Tom is Cruise. You know, super awesome. And we haven't, but, even, you haven't talked about what we, we you know, because I'm telling you, behind the scenes, he's got some ideas like they want to do like some space stuff, like him going into space, you know. For, yeah. That's the logical progression for Tom Cruise. Sure. I mean, what else is there for him to do besides like go to the center of the earth? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's also, not only does he have to get, you know, skydive qualified, which he is, he has to get. He had, he's already pilot qualified. He's already a pilot driving actual jets mm-hmm. in Top Gun. Mm-hmm. Like uh, he just has to get astronaut qualified, and he's got to go to school and become a geologist, and then go to the center of the Earth. Like, yep, and he will do it too. And he will do it. Yeah, you know, if you ever uh, if you ever feel like you're not, you don't have enough time, or it's too late for you to pursue something, just remember Tom Cruise. We'll probably do it. So it's not late for you. It's not too late for you. <laughs> if Tom Cruise can do it, you can too. Yeah. He's just a man. He bleeds. We're all pink on the inside. That's right. Yeah. But I think we talked, spent a good chunk of time on the Mission Impossible series. Great stunts overall, but we have a lot to go through and it's hard to pick. I think you can't talk about stunts and great people like Tom Cruise and Buster Keaton without mentioning Jackie Chan. Jackie um, Chan, you know. man. Yeah. Yeah, Jackie Chan, you know, when you talk about Jackie Chan, the first thing that mention the first thing anybody ever mentions is the fact that, yeah, Jackie Chan, he does his own stunts. Yep. That's like, it's almost like his last name. It's like, Jackie Chan does his own, or it's Jackie does his own stunts, Chan. That's, <laughs> that's his <laughs> middle name, yep. That's yep. literally his, his middle name. And, you know, I, I grew up on Jackie Chan, you know, watching him in, you know, Rush Hour or, uh, fuck, why am I blanking? See, I just said I'm growing up on him, and now I'm just showing my <laughs> Shanghai ass. Noon. But, oh yeah, Shanghai Noon, and yep. then uh, yeah, but just watching him, even like the outtakes at the end, yeah, that show <laughs> that show when his stunts go wrong. Yep, like and they do. He'll do like one stunt. I remember like it, when he's doing fight choreography, and they have a ladder. And he literally has to like jump through a ladder that's not being supported by anything. It's just standing there and he's jumping through one of the rungs and like kicking a guy and then jumping back out and kicking another guy all while balancing this ladder on its own axis. Yep. And like, you know, he does it maybe four or five times and like in the takes it shows him trying to attempt it and the ladder just completely falling on top of him and him just getting injured. Yeah. And like, uh, but that's why you appreciate it so much because he's literally so committed to the shot that uh, he he does whatever it takes, regardless of how many times. Jackie Chan reminds me of skateboarders, dude. <laughs> yeah, innovating, innovating with their bodies, you know, because he had a uh, he has a background in the uh, the Chinese theater, which is has a lot of acrobatics. I think he went yeah. there like as a, as a young age. Him and a couple other dudes of his generation, like uh, Yoon Bu and uh, uh, or uh, there's another guy. Martial law, you guys use the hefty dude. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, he was. They all grew up together and like came up together and doing stunts. And uh, yeah, man. And he has, his, you know, I think he had his own stunt team for a long time that he would do all his movies with because they all worked together. And then they would just innovate. I'm sure he would innovate on the fly on set. They probably got to. You obviously had to plan these things out, but. 
uh, you know, coming up with little innovative things because he didn't just do like you could talk about Jackie Chan fight choreography and then you could talk about Jackie Chan stunts and then how the two intermingle with one another because a lot of times it was yeah. stunts and choreography at the same time. He has a lot of amazing stunts to where it's just the stunt, right? Like Rumble in the Bronx. He has that amazing rooftop jump where he just jumps from like a, a parking garage on one end to like something like maybe two stories down below, like a door opening. And and that's just him. He just, he just has to jump and then have to, has to land on the other side, like parkour style, which is just an amazing human feat. Like in the same movie, he's got that hovercraft jump where there's in the movie, there's a hovercraft and he has to jump from, a bridge or or a landing next to the hovercraft as it drives by and land on the hovercraft and if you look in the in the outtakes at the end of the movie he actually breaks his ankle when he lands on the hovercraft and then he has to come back a couple weeks later in a cast and then they they give him a sleeve that looks like a shoe and a sock but it's like big and he just yeah. slips on over the cast and then he has to do things like he was doing water skiing with that cast you know, because like you can't, uh, can't you yeah. schedule to keep, can't, can't uh, give it up. You know, uh, yeah. I, I don't even think Tom Cruise would do was doing stuff like that. Yeah, the studio they're gonna pull our budgeting if we don't get this on time. So here's this sock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's yeah. the sock that looks no, like amazing. a fake shoe. You know, uh, his fa- one of his most more famous ones uh, is uh, in a movie called Police Story, which is you know what he did a lot of Hong Kong exclusive stuff before he came over to the United States to do movies. Um, but it's a light pole stunt where, and if you know, Jackie Chan, you know what I'm talking about where he's at like a department store. He's at the top level, bad guys on the bottom level. He's got to get there quick. Then there's a, a light display next to the stair landing he's on and a bunch of lights attached to it. And so in the movie, he jumps from the landing at the top and grabs onto the pole and slides down while all of the lights are like popping and, you know, and breaking and stuff. And then he lands in like this, uh, kind of this rattan like gazebo thing for like a soft landing. But what you find out is, is, is at the time that they, to power the lights, instead of light, attaching the power to like something small, like a car battery, some dude just like plugged it into the, to the wall socket. So there was oh, like great. full power light. So as he's going down, he's getting like second degree burns on his hands and stuff because all the electricity is like, and the lights are like hitting him and popping off and going oh, into great. his body and stuff. And so he says, Jackie Chan, I don't know how many, uh, you know, injuries Buster Keaton or Tom Cruise has, but part of Jackie Chan's legend is just how often he's been, he's been hurt. Did you see that video with him and his daughter watching montages of his stunts? Like his, it's, it's him and his daughter watching a bunch of montages and like, He's like kind of laughing and looking at her and she's like starting to like cry. <laughs> like yeah, get all emotional. I think I have seen this because she's like, I'm watching my dad just get the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> and then he starts getting, he's like, oh man, I, I guess I really did kind of, and he feels bad because his daughter's crying. But yeah, Jackie Chan uh, has just punished himself so, so much. And, uh, you know, shout, shout out to, hey, shout out to every stunt man and stunt woman who's ever worked in the industry. I think sometimes they don't get enough love and enough credit. And even though Jackie Chan has yeah. done his own stunts and Tom Cruise does their own stunts, there's a lot of actors that don't. And so yeah. throughout the decades, those stunt people, you know, they, they have done some amazing things. And it's, you know, I think with CGI, I, 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 I'm sure there's still some danger today when they use ropes and green screen and stuff like that. But, uh, um, man, I just think like, there's just nothing quite like watching a real dude, like, like jump off a cliff, you know, or, or, or do a bike jump off or whatever, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have a list of Jackie Chan injuries. If you want me to really read yeah. <laughs> show. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Okay. Yeah. So this is literally separated by body part. Okay. I'll read a few of them just cause it's a very long list. So head other than a brain, hem- uh, other than brain hemorrhage, Jackie suffered on armor of gold. He hit his head and injured it many times. Jackie was actually knocked out completely unconscious while working as a stuntman on hand, hand of death, his ears, the army armor of God, uh, fall also left him hard of hearing in one ear. 
in Drunken Master, uh, his brow ridge of his eye was injured and nearly lost an eye. His nose, Jackie broke his nose at least three times on Young Master, Project A, and Mr. Nice Guy. Cheek, while making Super Cop, Jackie dislocated a cheekbone. He didn't even know he could do that. Teeth, <laughs> Huang Jang Lee is a tremendous kicker, as Jackie found out when he kicked one of Jackie's teeth accidentally out while making Snake and Eagle Shadow. Chin, Jackie injured his chin on Dragon Lord. It was painful for him even to talk for a while. Made it hard for him to direct, not, men- not to mention act. His throat during Young Master, Jackie also uh, uh, suffocated, almost suffocated while he injured his throat. <sighs> neck, Jackie hurt his neck a lot, but his worst neck injury happened during the clock tower fall in Project A after he messed up a flip during Mr. Nice Guy. Shoulder, Jackie dislocated his shoulder while making City Hunter hand during the protector. Jackie hurt his hand, finger, bones, adding injury to in. Uh, in injury to insult arm while Jackie was shooting a fight scene in Snake in the Eagle Shadow. His arm accidentally slashed by a sword that could have uh, had a blunt edge. Blood went everywhere and he fell down screaming with the camera still rolling. That's real pain you see in the movie. Oh, uh, oh my god. Chest. Armor of God 2 Operation Condor. Jackie lo- dislocated his sternum after falling from a hanging chain. That's another bone Jackie didn't know he could dislocate but somehow managed to do it. His back. Jackie had a lot of back injuries while doing the movies but the pole slide scene in Police Story almost Almost paralyzed him when he nearly broke the seven and eighth vertebrae in his spine, his <sighs> pelvis. During the pole side slunt, Jackie dislocated his pelvis. Legs, Jackie crushed his legs while shooting Crime Story after getting caught between two cars. His knee, Jackie hurt his knee so often that he wondered whether there's even cartilage left in them. <laughs> it makes any stunt, which he has to jump harder, but he does his best anyways. Mm. And his foot, Jackie broke his ankle while jumping the hovercraft in Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah so that's that's the list. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's crazy, man. So that's much nuts. so much pain. So hey, you know, I mean not hey, you gotta be safe, right? You don't want to cause long term yeah. injury. But I think if you have a little bit of a muscle ache, a shoulder pain, don't let that stop you from getting out and doing what you gotta do throughout the day because Jackie Chan is your guide. He is yeah. gone before you and for the love of only for the love of entertainment and the entertaining people has he has he repeatedly injured his body <laughs> yeah so we have the face of drive which is tom cruise in hollywood and then yes. we have the body of resilience which is jackie chan yes this is the this is the this is the stuntman altar at which you can kneel and thank your lucky stars that nothing you have to do today is going to be nearly yeah. as hard as what they did it should inspire you um it should i'd like to i want to get this one in there uh, because it is something, you know, uh, it is something that I think, uh, teaches us a good lesson about filmmaking. Uh, so stunts are, are supposed to be a part of the larger storytelling process, right? It's, it's, yes. you know, there can be a great stunt in the midst of a mediocre movie and you'll remember the stunt, but you may not even know what the movie's about. You just remember like, oh, that guy did that thing. He jumped off the whatever, you know, and that was so amazing. What was the movie about? Eh, I don't know. But yeah. The uh, bungee jump off of the dam in the beginning of GoldenEye, 007 GoldenEye, back in the day, uh, I think is a great, it, it, ha- it came at a great moment for the franchise and then also is a great example of how it can really bring the audience into the story because that jump, uh, like I said, it happens in the opening moments. It's, the, it's one of the first things you see uh, right after, you know, the 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 barrel scene you know james bond pierce bros yeah he shoots the thing and then you're boom you're at a dam there's a plane that flies over and the very next shot is a dude running across the dam with a bunch of bungee cord in his arms you know and golden eye came after it was like i think like a six-year break uh the previous uh timothy dalton movies had had not been the best in the franchise's history and so people were wondering, like, the Cold War's over. It's the 90s now. Do we really need another James Bond movie? Uh, is this like a viable? The yes. <laughs> and we know the answer to that. But uh, Pierce Brosnan, it was his first movie. And uh, so there was a lot of pressure pressure on it, right? And so how do you, like, get people in there? How do you say something about the character without saying any lines of dialogue, uh, you know, uh, it, about who this person is and what they're willing to do and all that, the skill that they have? Well, if you don't if you don't know, it's basically, uh, you know, he runs onto the dam. He gets right in the middle. And it's this huge dam in Switzerland. The Ver the Verzaska Dam in Switzerland is where they did this stunt. It's supposed to be in Russia somewhere, but um, it's this huge dam, and it drops down and it kind of curves at the bottom. And he basically hooks up 
the bungee cord and he stands at the edge and he just jumps off. And this stunt, and, and, it, and you know, they, they shot him with a bunch of cameras and I think they only did it once. And, um, it's amazing. It's a slow motion where he just like iron cross. He's got his arms outstretched and he yeah. jumps off and, you know, drops down. And then there's, there's like a little whiplash when the rope catches up with his body, kind of whips him down. And, uh, and then at the very end, he's supposed to pull out a gun, like a grappling gun and, and shoot it. And then he kind of catches himself at the bottom, pulls himself down to get into the, get into the base. But they talk about that where it's like, uh, you know, this amazing thing, the stunt man, um, let me see if I can, uh, Michael something. I, I want to give him proper. Michael something. Yeah. I want to give him proper, proper credit. Uh, but, um. I think, uh, oh, Wayne Michaels. Wayne Michaels was the stuntman. And uh, can you, can, I mean, can you imagine the feeling? Everyone, I want you to close your eyes, unless you're driving right now, and imagine yourself at the edge of this giant, this giant dam, like the sheer drop down. There's no guardrails. You're looking down. Maybe you feel a little wavering. Yeah, you're feeling it. Yeah, yeah. Some of you are like, no, what I'm are you getting, doing? I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about to, about, uh, and, uh, and yeah, the, 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 you know, you jump off and then he said that whip that you see kind of as he, as the, the rope kind of pulls him up or whatever, as he's falling, he said he kind of momentarily passed out and the shot is supposed to be where he's falling. Uh, there's a moment where the, the cliffs kind of obscure his obscure him from view from the cameras. Mm. And he was supposed to pull out a gun and point it up to get ready for the next shot where you see him firing the grappling gun. Uh, and he like barely, he passed out a little bit. And then the very next moment he woke up and he's like, Oh, I got to get this gun. I got to get the gun out. He, and you see him struggling for it. And then right as he points the gun down, you get the shot. He like is obscured from view by the rocks. But, uh, I think this is, it's an iconic moment. Uh, we don't know anything about the character. It's a brand new James Bond movie. I thought it was a great way to start off and reignite the series. Um, yeah. So it's just, uh, just a great example of a, of, of, uh, how a stunt can actually do a good job of helping tell the story and tell you something about the character, which uh, I think I think is a great use of the stunt as a storytelling tool. So the Golden Eye, damn bungee jump, nice man. Yeah, man. Well, that's great. That's a little philosophical inside the head of you know what baseball. A true movie buff yeah. expects out of a film. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, I mean, I want to talk about since we're running a little low on time, I want to talk about. A few just singular stunts. Okay. Uh, I love The Dark Knight. You know, the Christopher Nolan Bat film mm. or Batman films are my favorite Batman films ever to come out. Uh, and in The Dark Knight, you have this amazing stunt where they flip an entire semi truck. Uh, there is a basically a metal cord that Batman shoots from his uh, from his vehicle and ends up just kind of bobbing and weaving through traffic in order to get it around this truck and yeah. it all cinches up and the truck going full speed gets immediately stopped and ends up flipping forward with multiple people inside <laughs> so that's pretty much how he stops this like quote-unquote war rig yeah and well that's a little foreshadowing <laughs> uh, but uh but uh it's a truly amazing scene and yeah. you know when you're working with tons and tons of just twisted metal like a lot can go wrong everybody knows no one wants to be hit by a semi truck and i don't know what person on earth wants to be in a semi truck when it is not just flipped but flipped over itself yeah like i'll be i i wouldn't mind being a semi truck but just like kind of rolled over left or right <laughs> but the fact that this thing does like an entire you know somersault and lands on its on its roof do you think uh, it, that for that particular shot, do you think there were people actually in there or do you think they cut it question. so close that to where they had just like a device in there that's yeah. like keeping it going? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know Christopher Nolan and his practical effects um, there. I don't I definitely think there wasn't anybody in the bed of the truck like riding in the. Uh, sure, sure. That would be. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be terrible. Sanity. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I you know, I wouldn't put it past Christopher Nolan to actually have somebody driving it when that <laughs> happened. But then again, you don't know how that wire like that wire could have completely gone through the entire truck and decapitated anybody. So I'm going to safely assume that there was nobody in there, but 
just the pure force of dumping a truck like that yeah uh is absolutely crazy and practical uh, too man like they actually flipped yeah. it so it's not a cgi truck i love that christopher nolan when he can really likes to do practical effects but uh yeah i just wanted to mention the dark knight real quick and i know you love this movie uh so i'll let you talk about it um because I've been talking for a little bit now, but Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, Mad Max Fury Road is is so amazing. The whole Mad Max f- f- franchise is built around the idea of like these crazy stunts because it's all his movies. All these Mad Max movies are basically excuses to have chase scenes where amazing stunts happen. You know, uh, for even from the very beginning, there are the, the the whole kind of appeal of it is like they're driving down the road at high speeds and doing these crazy, amazing stunts. Uh, road Warrior has the kind of the big iconic war rig scene where they're chasing after the 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 rig, presumably that has a bunch of gasoline in it, and uh, you know the the falls and stuff like that. Actually, Road Warrior, there's a famous uh, there's a famous stunt that one of the stuntmen does where. Uh, they're, they're being chased and there's a bunch of guys on motorcycles. One dude kind of gets pushed off the road and he hits something on the road and then does like this end over end flip, like his body flips over and over and over again. Um, and that stuntman actually like that stuntman went to the hospital. Like he was hospitalized for months, like broke so Jeez. many different bones. This is a week. So when you see that stunt in road warrior, just, do a little salute for that guy because he sacrificed his body for your entertainment. But yeah. Fury Road, uh, it stands alone, man. There are so many amazing things that they did in that. Uh, and it's just like one after the other after the other. And there's some CGI in it, obviously. There's some crashes that, you know, they obviously couldn't have a real person do and that kind of stuff. But the, you know, things like the witness me jump where that war boy gets witness hit. Me! With the arrows, and then he takes two yeah. grenade grenade spears and jumps off, you know, from one uh, from the war rig uh, onto the other car, and um, uh, like being you know being strapped to the front, it's, uh, Tom Tom Hardy being strapped to the front of these uh, these cars on these poles, um, and uh, let's see, chasing through the cage, jumping out on the hook at the end, yeah, um, the. Uh, I think my favorite one is the the final sequence when they're they're actually heading back. They've got, they've gone out, they've been chased, and they decide to actually head right back through and uh, head back to kind of their place of origin, which I think is so great. It's, it's there were I think I remember seeing like there's four, three or four different writers or you know writing pairings for the movie and the credits. I'm like, it took four people to write this. It's the simplest story ever. They go out <laughs> and then they come right back, you know. But um. The you know the stunts and stuff when they're coming back when they got the dudes on the uh, the pole guys they're like swinging back and forth, uh, and um, you know hanging in between all of the the vehicles almost falling off you know like uh, a lot of I think with a lot of the stunts where they're going through hills or different terrain I think that the hills and the terrain are CGI'd so they probably just had like a just a big stretch of desert that they just drove back and forth on but. Uh, the beauty of Mad Max Fury Road is how it all is composed and like comes together. You know, I think there's the, the, those, the beautiful shot that kind of encapsulates it is where Tom Hardy is on one of these swinging pole things, kind of going back and forth. And behind him, one of the, one of the semi rigs is like blowing up and everybody's like after him and like driving. And he kind of swings up into frame as this rig is blowing up and he's like looking around and he swings out of frame. It's just this beautiful, encapsulation of the insane stunts uh that they did you know in fury road and not and not not to be uh not to be outdone um the the older max mad max just to mention it but uh beyond thunderdome you know with mel gibson Beyond uh, thunderdome. can't we just get beyond thunderdome but um <laughs> uh that one had its own its own special set of uh of, of stunts as well, but Mad Max Fury Road is like it's like a crowning achievement for uh, was it George Miller I think is the the director's name director of Babe Two Pig in the City as well, <laughs> uh, which I I love a really diverse uh, you know production. <laughs> somebody told me I need to watch that, but somebody told me that if you watch it, it's actually one of those really entertaining movies that you don't expect to be entertaining on like all levels. But there's a big chase scene in that one too, apparently. So maybe George Miller is what? just a big fan of chase scenes. Yeah. That's Does like it, his regardless of what it is, he's going to do Paddington bear next and just have like, you <laughs> know, 
poachers going after him. Yeah. Uh, by the way, man, uh, I, I actually saw Paddington too, man. And it actually does make you want to be a better man. It does. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good movie. It's so good. You don't expect no. it to be. It has a great, great life lessons, great morality tale, you know? Yeah. Great comic relief. Just He's just a good guy. Well, that's great, man. I think we've covered some excellent, excellent stunts, whether it's actual stunts uh, performed in cinema, TV, and individuals that deserve recognition Mm. uh, for their dedication and their sacrifice of their bodies to make, you know, such entertaining things for us to luckily watch. Uh, But we're going to have to do it, like we say, in good old pop culture fashion. We're going to have to do another one of these just because there's so many stunts. Yeah, so part two, hopefully in the near future. But we have a fan question and a game. And since we're running out of time here, unfortunately, we're going to have to move on. But Izzy, we have this fan question from Travis Calvin. Why don't you go ahead and read it out? Travis Calvin via email. Uh, By the way, if you want to send us an email, you're more than welcome to at PCFMPodcast at gmail.com. Or you can send us a DM at Instagram. Our Instagram account is PCFMPodcast. Come and uh, say hi to us. Uh, He says, if you could change the death of one character in a film, whose would you change and, and what would it become? Or would they die at all? Would this change the movie's plot? Oh, wow. That's a really interesting question because it's kind of a dilemma because... You know, and if it's done right, when a character dies in a movie, it's it, it's poignant and it it hurts, but it's it's powerful and it makes sense for the film. Like I I wouldn't yeah. want to change Sean Bean's character's death in Lord of the Rings, you know, because oh, that was like really because so... I was literally really? say Boromir lives, kills all the Urukai, and then Minas Tirith is more than willing to partner with Rohan because they have uh... Sean Bean's character to be like we have a mission. And his father respects him so much, he's the favorite, that they wouldn't have to go through all that torment in order to get Minas Tirith on their side. So that's literally what I was going to say. I was going to immediately, first thought, uh, Boromir does not die. <laughs> that's amazing, man. Oh, okay. I, I get what you're playing at. You know what? Here's here's who I would not have die. Uh, I would not, I would change the entire first, what is it, five minutes of Alien 3 because oh, really? uh, Aliens is my favorite movie of all time. And I love Ripley and Newt. I love Hicks and I love Bishop, right? So in the first, it, before the credits, I think are even done with in Alien 3, all those characters except for Ripley die. Like they're the only surviving characters from the previous movie. And I'm sure for the purposes of the story, you know, they they all die. Uh, and they all crash on this prison planet and Ripley's the only one that survives. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so it's like Ripley, it even has shots of him like Newt's dead. Uh, uh, Bishop is like torn apart. He's an Android. And then Hicks is freaking just dead. They're just dead, yeah. man. And that was such a gut punch to me as a, as like a teenager <laughs> when I saw that, uh, you know, uh, or yeah, I can't remember when it came out. It was like early nineties, late eighties, but uh, and that's David Fincher, man. That was like one of his first big budget movies, him breaking in and making a name for himself. Uh, I totally respect him as a filmmaker, but man, I hated that. I would have had him live and I would have had yeah. him, if they were going to go out, I wanted their deaths to mean something. It was, it's like, oh, you know what? You know, another one I would have not changed is Terminator Dark Fate. Like oh. Terminator 2. Oh, Sarah Connor movie. just getting murdered? No, no. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, uh, John Connor in the first 30 seconds of the film getting murdered. Oh, is it by John a Terminator? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like CGI John Connor and de aged Sarah Connor, uh, played by my friend Maddie Curley. Actually, she was the body double for Sarah Connor. Oh, yeah. So yeah, if you see that body, that's my friend Maddie Curley's body. But uh, <laughs> uh, she did a great job. But yeah, just Terminator 2, and you have these beloved characters. And at the end of Terminator 2, she's like, for the first time in my life, I have hope about the future. <laughs> it's like Terminator Dark Face, like, nope, no, you don't. Here comes nope. Terminator just to kill John Connor in the first 30 seconds of the movie so we can sweep all that aside and make way for our completely garbagio plot that's exactly <laughs> the same as every other Terminator movie, you know? Uh, so I would, yeah, that would, I would have changed it and John Connor wouldn't have died. In fact, I would have changed the whole timeline and Dark Fate would never have existed in the first place. Well, there you go, buddy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and to be honest, if I had to change a death in Lord of the Rings, speaking of saving Beer, Boromir, I think you could kill off Frodo. I, I do not care for <gasps> Frodo. Kill off Frodo because I think Sam would have finished the job anyways because he would be so overcome by Frodo's death that he... Because obviously when Frodo's taken to the tower and the is kidnapped, you know kidnapped by the orcs and taken by Shelob and then the orcs come and grab him and he's in that tower he has to rescue him anyway he gets this motivation and yeah. becomes like you know it's basically that's like the final catalyst of to him becoming the true hero i think if frodo actually died uh-huh. he would have been like i'm gonna do this for us and like take the ring he would have had double the lamb's bread so it would have just been easier for him <laughs> and yeah and then sam would have been the would have been the hero that he was all along so it's it's uh, true, man, because, you know, Sam was not as he wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been enough time for him to be corrupted by the ring. So he would have been able to go to the go to the go to Mount Doom and throw the ring in without any problem because he wouldn't have been as tempted yeah. by it as much as Frodo yeah. been. So I actually yeah. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. You know, Frodo, go there out, go. go out like a, a hero's death and then let Sam yeah. take the rest of them. Exactly. Yeah. Plus, he would have killed off Schmeagle because he's been trying to plot him, and he's yep. just like, okay. Yep. Yeah. He's close enough when he's in that tower. They're close enough in Mordor to know where he needs to go. So yeah, I think if you know Frodo actually died when he was in that tower instead of rescuing him, uh, he'd just pick up the ring, and then yeah, he would. It would have been solid um, because Sam was mentally strong enough, anyways, mm-hmm. uh, to I think to fight it. But. Travis, I hope that answered your question, and thank you for reaching out. Again, folks, if you have a question for us that you want to see featured on a future episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast, you know what to do. Izzy said it before, but I'm going to tell you again because repetition is king. Send us an email to pcfmpodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Instagram at pcfmpodcast. And with that, folks, before we go, we always love to play a game. Actually, this... Cameron, let me interrupt no, you. Actually, Sorry, man. Just please do to it. Do it very rudely. Too, yeah, yeah, I just want to push you aside, man, because it's all about me. Yeah. Actually, it's all about you because I wanted to also mention, if you guys didn't know this yet, Cameron now has a Twitch channel. I have always had a Twitch oh, channel. Yes. Twitch.tv slash my happy self. I stream three days a week on Mondays and Wednesdays, 12 noon to 5 p.m. and Friday morning, 7 a.m. to noon. Cameron now has a Twitch channel. at I do indeed. Kit God Cam. Yes, it is twitch.tv slash kickgodcam. I'm kind of figuring it out still, sure. so I'm not as professional as Izzy, but whenever I get a chance to stream, it's always a good time. I think so, and that's just my ego talking. If you don't like the stream, keep it to your goddamn self. Uh, <laughs> We're going to stream together. We're going to do some multi-streams yes, too, man. Yes, we will do multi-streams in the future, and it'll always be a wonderful time. Yep. But thank you for that shout-out. I really appreciate yeah, that. Man. Now, since I wasn't so, since I was so uh, rudely interrupted, now we can play our game. And this game, I have the game. So Izzy is going to be playing. Are you ready? Let's do it, man. I'm ready. I'm always ready for the games because I know that Chris hates us secretly in his heart. Speaking of hating each other, Chris hates us the most. So he makes these games to torture us. Absolutely. And we'll find out if this game is going to just drive the nail even further. So this game is called, Did They Really Do That? I'm going to describe a stunt and you simply have to tell me whether it really happened or if it was CGI. Okay. Super easy. Cool. I like this. Okay. So I guess the hardest part about this game is if you've seen this stunt before. Right. Right. I'm feeling yeah. pretty good because I've seen a lot of movies, folks. You know. I know Last you weekend. have. So, let's do it. You ready? Yep. Okay, so first one, no warm-up, just going hot and heavy. Live free or die hard. Have you seen this? Yes. Okay, so when the car ramps into the helicopter. Ooh. Did they did actually they do that? Did they actually did do, they do that? that? Or was that CGI? Hmm. You know, I mean, this is like later on in Bruce Willis's career. I don't think yet he had been really debilitated by uh, the effects of his dementia, but uh, not that that has anything to do with it, but um, maybe because he had dementia, he just accidentally drove maybe he, a car yeah. into a helicopter like, because he forgot the that. rules of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Killed three stuntmen. Uh, I'm going to say, no, I'm going to say that he, they didn't actually do that. That was CGI. Um, I don't see them doing a lot of practical effects. The later we get into movie, movie history. So, well, you're wrong. He did do that. And it was because of his dementia. No, he really did. They really did that. Really? Oh, wow, yeah. Man. Yeah, it's never too late. It's, right. Just like I said, folks, it is never too late to 
pursue your dreams. To drive a car or into run, a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So starting off a little shaky, but I have a strong, confident feeling that you're going to pick it up on this next one. So our next one here is Casino Royale. James Bond rolls his car and it flips seven times. Uh, I am going to say yes because I the way that it looks and and that was like a big selling point in the the initial trailer for the film. I remember seeing that uh, that that the way that it flips and stuff it it has such a chaotic look to it that I think it would be hard to duplicate with CGI uh, effectively. So I'm going to say that act they actually did that. They actually flipped the car. Okay, and I'm going to say you are right, because yes, they actually did that. Okay, man, you're on the come up, coming back, redeeming yourself. All All right, next one, and here we go. The Dark Knight Rises, the beginning of the movie when they drop the private jet to the ground. Ah. Well, yes, yeah. I, I'm I'm going to say yes, because I remember actually seeing some like I was doing research for this episode and checking out different stunt montages and knowing Christopher Nolan, as we do, he's a fan of practical stuff. So yep. I remember seeing it like a, a big fuselage hanging from something else and some dudes crawling on it. So I'm going to say yes, they actually did that. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. And. I'm surprised we didn't mention that scene because that scene is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, that bl- that starts yeah. off the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Talk about stunts in movies. Yeah, taking a plane and having it towed by another plane so fast that it rim the wings rip off and it's just basically towing a body of a. That's absolutely bonkers. <laughs> uh, but that can be mentioned in our part two of this. But moving on, good. So you're two for one. You're coming back. Off of your injury, mm-hmm. and you're going to make a full recovery here. I have a feeling. So, so next one, cliffhanger, zip lining between two moving planes. Oh, uh, cliffhanger! Cliffhanger with Sylvester Stallone. Man, I don't, I don't remember that. That's oh, I don't maybe, even remember that. Yeah, maybe that's in the <laughs> maybe that's sort of the uh, to the start of, start of the second act when the bad guys are trying to uh, trying to break one of their dudes. I know they do that in Air Force One. Uh, where they have zip line or something between two, but okay. So it's been a long time. I I don't remember seeing this, but it's back in the early days, uh, the early days of filmmaking. It's back in the yeah. early days of CGI, I think. So, man, between two planes, God, that's got to be really. I don't know, man. But see, would they really do that back in the day? That seems just like exceedingly dangerous. <laughs> uh, I gotta What's go with my. Be? I gotta go with my instincts on this. I'm gonna say yes. They actually did that. Wait, wait. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. They actually did that. Yes, they actually oh. did that. Way to way to stick with your instincts there. Always trust your gut. Yeah, yeah they actually zip line between two moving planes. All right, man. Three for one. All You're right. killing it. Right. Moving on. Inception. Spinning hallway fight. Oh yes. Now th- this is famous for being done practically because they had an entire set on a gimbal that would that would move and they yeah. had the dudes on wires and they had the camera that so the camera is fixed with the set. It just looks like they're going from wall to wall. You can't see the spinning of it. So yeah, this is famous for being practical. Yeah, that was absolutely done practically. Okay, so since you know it, I'm just going to tell you, yes, they really did that. Right. So awesome, man. Let's see if you can finish it off strong. <sighs> Here we go. I've never heard of this movie, but you can if you have that'd be great. Children of Men. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've heard of so it. So, it's I a, seen it's it, a though. single take single take car crash scene in the forest. So, it's literally if, even if you haven't seen this, you've heard of it. Yeah. It's a 50-50 shot. Yeah. What well, it's a it's what they call a one or a one shot where they don't cut. They don't seem to cut kind of like in 1917, the whole movie seems to be one long shot. Um, yeah. Ah, she that stuff, man. I, I I mean, I'm sure that they they wanted to make it look like one shot because I think that movie is famous for having some really long tracking shots. But there are cuts in there, so I don't know how they're really defined. And I'm just gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes that that they actually did that, and they actually did it, in, it with a one shot. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say they actually did that. Way to start out, or way to finish strong, buddy. That is correct. Uh, they really did that. All right. So I only missed okay. one. Only missed one. Only missed one due to dementia causes. But <laughs> I can tell you this. 
that you, my friend, do not have dementia because you finished it very strong. Uh, thank God. So good job, Izzy. You crushed this game. <laughs> thank you, Chris, for helping us to stave off dementia one more day. And thank Absolutely. you, everybody, for joining us on this amazing episode where we highlight stunts from our favorite movies. What are some of your favorite stunts? Uh, let us know in the comments section, folks, if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, and if you want even more amazing content, please join us on our Patreon. We've got some great plans for the future. And uh, yeah, let us know what other kind of stuff you want to see on the PCFM Podcast YouTube website as well, because we want to create amazing content for all of you now that we are free and independent. Uh, Cameron, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. Absolutely. And thank you so much for taking the time to tolerate me and talk with stunt. Talk about stunts with me, my friend. And with that, cue music. What's going on, everybody? You just listened to the free version of the PCFM podcast. If you want full-length versions of podcast episodes, plus much, much more, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash PCFM podcast. That is right, Israel. If you want access to this full episode, you have to subscribe to the Fuzzy Private tier, which is our cheapest tier on Patreon at $5 a month. But if you are interested in a little bit more, we also have the Salty Sergeant tier at $8 a month and the Lifer tier at $12 a month. So hopefully we will see you there, PCFM family. Cue music.